Um, is there so, so open meeting requirements have been met? So let's do a roll call of committee members. Nutter here. Schreier here. Dietrich. Haynes. Anybody else? No? Okay. Sorge. Oh. Yeah, Lazinski. And just so you know, Jeannie, I have to be off by 9.30ish. I have a State of Wisconsin virtual meeting too, so. Okay, that's fine. I think we have uh, an agenda that will get us, get you out on time. Okay. So, uh, is there a motion to adopt the agenda or any changes needed on the agenda? Move any? to adopt as printed. Okay. I'll second. This is Jean. Okay, we got a second already from Michelle. Oh, okay. I can't hear if she said anything, so. Okay. That's my phone. Um, approval of the minutes. Has everybody had a chance to review the minutes from 2 2 21? Are there any changes, corrections? I know Beth's not here. She's usually the editor for a spell check. <laughs> I didn't notice anything when I saw them, so. I Motion to approve. <coughs> second. I'll second Michelle. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, we have some time for public comments. <coughs> I need to put on my glasses to read this number. Um, should anybody from the public who's watching have a comment or want to say anything, the call in number? is 715-538-1770. And Gene, I'll make just a couple quick comments that aren't agenda items per se, but uh, last night I attended the City of Blair Council meeting. Um, they're now taking up the issue of opening more of their streets to both ATV and um, golf cart um, access. Um, so I was there last night, the highway commissioner was there, and we just gave our perspective from some of the work that we've done as a committee. Um, the town of Preston recently voted to open up their town, uh, township roads to ATV traffic. Um, so we're seeing a lot of progression in the county on the issue of ATVs. You know, of course it was something that, you know, very, we very publicly worked on um, in 2019 into 2020. Um, and I think from that we are actually seeing momentum from the other municipalities um, in the county. So, uh, you know, though we didn't open up all county roads, I think we've, we've seen a real progress just in the last year of more opportunities for people to use their uh, UTVs, ATVs, both within the county and outsiders coming in. And my hope that just continues. And of course, the long term goal is, you know, as we look at, at um, the tourism side of ATV, UTVs, most people want to be on trails. They don't want to be on hard surface roads. So hopefully as we kind of build up, you know, people that, that you know, know Trumple County to be a place they can use ATVs, there might be more development of trails. So um, I just wanted to add that in during the public comment time. There, there has seemed to be some movement in that direction. So. How many townships are open? Boy, you caught me on the spot there. I'd, I'd have to go through and, and count them up, but um, I'd say probably at least four or five at this point. A lot in the south, frankly. Um, and then, you know, the south has really been focused on it, and I think the very north, because they have the Buffalo River State Trail, so it just kind of, it's natural to bring people kind of down from that. But I can get that information, and, um, you know, uh, we, we'll get some updated maps. I'll work with Ann to get uh, that information to her so we have updated maps of where people can actually ATV in the county. So. I know just by hearsay they said Buffalo County is open. Yeah, Buffalo County did. Yeah, yeah. they opened the county up. They opened the county up. It was, um, there was less controversy about it there than there was here. So, and so far no real problems. I'll be interested tomorrow, I'm going to a meeting uh, at the town of Buffalo. I did forward the group um, about the meeting. You're all welcome to go, but it, it's, it's more specifically about the flyway trail, that last little bit connecting the town of Buffalo Hall uh, is where it ends right now, you know, to the, the uh, wildlife refuge. Uh, but we'll be talking about some other issues as well. So I'll be interested to, just to hear if there's been any, you know, uh, complaints or anything like that. From, but from what I understand, there really hasn't been. So When did Buffalo, when was that decision made in Buffalo County? Was it, I think it was by referendum, I believe. It was they in the fall. They actually oh, voted this on fall? it. This fall? Yeah. So I don't know if they've actually implemented it fully, but they've made the decision to okay. do it. So 
Um, so I, I, good news to me, I think. Good news, you know, for the region as well. Yeah, and uh, I know the state trail up, you know, because I'm in the northern part of the state, is very well used. Yeah, no doubt. And like I say, you know, the tourism side of it, people, people want to be on trails, but I think this is a step to get more trails eventually. So. Okay, that would be good. Yeah. So I'll Jean, put, yes? This is Jean. Did we, was, was there a motion and a second to approve the minute? Yes. Okay, I didn't hear that. I'm just, you know, I had, I, I didn't, so I would have to abstain because I wasn't at the meeting. Okay, yeah, we did. Yeah, we're just waiting to see. I'll, I'll wait a couple more minutes to see if there's anybody out in the public that wants to call in. Um, how long does, what do you like? We, we put it on the agenda here that um, people wanting to make public comment must either be present or call in at the beginning of the meeting. Oh, okay, that way right. we don't necessarily have to wait okay. the 15 minutes. Yeah, you you have that. to be here I at the beginning. Yeah, so yeah. you can close it whenever. Okay, I'll close uh, public comment um, since we're not getting much. Um, number seven, the Wisconsin Great River Road update. Okay, so um, we uh received our all-american road designation on february 16th we are in the process of working with the national office which is the mississippi river parkway commission which um is in charge of all of our 10 states that border the mississippi river um, we are working closely with the wisconsin department of transportation and the wisconsin department of tourism in regards to having events for each uh, county. Um, when I get more information on that, I will uh, forward that out to uh, PTED and to the county board chair and, and others um, to participate. It will be down in um, Centerville Trumplow area. Um, I will be attending tomorrow's meeting as uh, like with Rob in regards to the flyway trail. We are also working on our 2021 Wisconsin Great River Road grant. And I'm happy to say that we just got our third grant for sales promotion, GEM grant um, to uh, take care of the state of Wisconsin for tourism. So I will um, provide more information for you at our next meeting. And that's it. Great, thanks, Jean. Do Maybe, could you like maybe just say what that means for the Great River Road? Because maybe the public is not fully aware if there are people listening. The, um, the All American Road designation? Yes. Uh, the state of Wisconsin, uh, the Wisconsin Great River Road has been Wisconsin Great River Road. The next designation was the um, American Byways, which is part of the Federal Highway Administration. Our commission um, in each state had the right to uh, write in to do this whole project. Um, took about, I don't know, half a year. And to get the designation of All American Road, or as we say, AAR, um, it had to go in front of um, the panel for the Federal Highway Association. So now we are at the highest level, the state of Wisconsin is at the highest level for the All-American Road, which hopefully we will be um, able to apply for federal grants, um, not only to promote, but to enhance um, our area. I think there was only two states out of the 10 that did not uh, write the application. So it's a huge deal. Yeah, congratulations on that and the hard work. So that's pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, it, it was lots and lots of hours. That's our jewel, that highway. I love it. It really is. I'll just add, this isn't connected to um, um, the, the fly or the uh, Jean's um, grant per se, but, you know, we did uh, our gem grant that we had for Trumpelow County, the last piece of that was um, um, some photographs that were professionally taken for us from uh, River Valley uh, Media. Um, so we were at the ice fishing contest in Independence um, a few weeks ago and got some really awesome photos, and I'll share those with you. Kind of forgot about that. Didn't forget about them, but haven't gotten them to you all yet. And we got some really cool photos down at Pearl Park. Um, we had a number of... Um, 
of uh, models coming, if you will, just local folks doing some snowshoeing and skiing and that sort of thing. So it was on one of those, well, you remember the day of the ice fishing contest, very cold, but um, uh, very sunny day, but ended up being, getting us some really awesome photos, both in Perot and at the uh, Independence Ice Fishing Contest. So, and again, that stemmed from our, our um, grant from the Department of Tourism that we got. So we've, um, it, it, some really good grant monies in the area of tourism have been coming, you know, to Trempolo County, um, both from the work we've done and from a lot from the work that, you know, uh, Gene and, and other organizations have been doing. So uh, we've been really lucky cool. that way. Since ice fishing is not happening on Crystal Lake and Strum now because of the dam, so. Right. Uh, anyway. with the dam? It's broke, so. It's so frozen? It, there's something wrong with it, uh. it, so they've got to do some major work on it. So, ice fishing ended a while ago. Okay, well, thanks everybody for that hard work. Um, Trempolo County, we're moving on to number eight on the agenda, Trempolo County Outdoor Rec Plan Update. Yes, so um, not a ton of new things to report. This will be a recurring agenda item, you know, okay. as we go forward through most of, of 2021. Um, still at the point where we're, we're gathering, um, one big piece of the outdoor rec plan is doing an assessment of outdoor rec opportunities. So that's, you know, that's figuring out how many camping sites do we have within the whole county? You know, how many miles of bike trails, that sort of thing. So I'm very much still in the data gathering piece of it. Um, but we'll be then transitioning into actually having, you know, meetings with um, different stakeholders throughout the county as we develop our goals, um, you know, for the next five years when it comes to outdoor recreation. So, um, yeah, that's where we're at with that right now. Our current plan goes until the end of this year. Okay. And if you could just give maybe people in the public may not know about that we did have an extension. And part of the issue with that is we're not going to get census data. Uh, until after September. Yeah, yeah, and which has been not just a problem for, for us, but you know, as this is a year we're supposed to do redistricting all around the country. Um, there's a lot of things that depends on that census data and that plays into our outdoor recreation plan because we also look at trends, um, you know, um, um, demographic trends that help um, uh, when we work putting together what our priorities are going to be. So we did, I did apply and we did receive an extension of our outdoor rec plan and other counties have done this as well to the end of the year. So okay. we're totally grant eligible. Um, you know, it, it, it basically applies the same as if, if our, um, no change than if we had approved a outdoor rec plan earlier this year. So, um, and that's, that's one of the big reasons why we, we, I asked for the extension to give us more time. We didn't want to approve a plan and then have to do an update to it in a few months when we had new data. Um, so yeah, that's okay. where we're at. Thanks for that, Rob. Um, the mission statement that's on every month. We still have Jean and I and Beth. I think it's Beth, right, Jean? Um, yes, and yeah. Dan for um, number um, four, yes. So as soon as Beth yeah. comes back and summer is better, and we have better weather, We this is something we really need to meet in person. Yes. So we can sit outside and, you know, I'm fully vaccinated. Hopefully you and Beth will be by then. We won't have to worry. So. It's always on the agenda. We'll get it. And do you want it to continue to be on yeah, the agenda? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. So I'll we make sure keep it is. reminding ourselves that's something that we need to do. Okay. And Beth will be home at the end of the week so we can um, talk about that. Are you here for number 10? I'm here to assist with number 10. Okay, great. That's what I wondered. I thought, oh, the lawyer's in the room. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> 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 okay, so we're moving on to number 10, Trempolo, lots, discussion, and possible action. Is that yes, you, Rick? Yes, I'll take the lead on this. Okay, I, I asked Rick if he could uh, come down and, you know, just be here for advice on some of the issues. I shouldn't say issues, but questions from the public that have been coming up about those lots down there and what they may or may not be allowed to do um, on that county property there. Okay. Um, so... You know, I, I won't say any specifics on who's sending or what, but this, this could kind of pertain to all of the lots that are down there if, if, as we move forward. Um, oh, Reed? Yes. Could, could you start by refreshing at least my memory on which lots we're talking sure. about? Sure, absolutely. I, I apologize. I should have been more and clear on that. remind um, people, we can't sell them, correct? That is correct. Um, due is to, uh, it was involvement with FEMA back in I think 06. They were deeded to the county, yep. That's and correct. FEMA and then yeah we don't have any option to sell them so it's ours in perpetuity. So these are lots that are located in the village of Trempolo. 
and um, after those private landowners, you know, you know, there were some massive flooding events. Uh, they they wanted out, and so FEMA came in. I'm not sure exactly how that situation works if they bought them out or whatnot. And then the by law, those lots automatically come over to the county. That's from my understanding. Um, and this so is down in the lakes area, correct? Yes, it is. It so floods. it always floods. Yeah. So we have been over the last couple of years just started to you know maybe lease these out as recreational lots. People can use them as they please, um, as long as they're abiding by you know floodplain rules, village of Trempeau rules, county rules, that kind of thing. So um, typically, what you see people is wanting to use the, these places as a weekend getaway to park a camper or something like that. So um, basically, I've I've been discussing with a few people that are interested in these lots. So I've got four or five topics here I'd like to discuss with the committee. Um, Right now, I have somebody or a party that's interested in putting in some sort, some kind of infrastructure on the property. I know you can't build anything, but that's according to that FEMA agreement. However, um, they would be interested in putting in like a driveway. Um, their words and spe specifically are: we would put down a base course and possibly recycle blacktop over the top. Um, it's it's something like this, something that we want to be okay with as a you know as the county allowing people to do this for these lots. Um, with the understanding that anything that they do to the lots would be become property of the county. Um, also, along with that question, they're asking, um, would the county consider reimbursements or maybe credit towards a lease due to the improvements they're doing on the lot? Um, so I, I guess these are questions I have for the, for the committee to kind of decipher through what direction we want to go here, or do we leave them the lots as they are and they can't make any improvements to them? Um, I'd, I'd like to be kind of consistent across the board. I know we have one lot where there's an existing pad already that we have in a, you know, we're working with an agreement with another party to move that pad, but there won't be any additional things added to those lots. So I, I just, I don't, I want a committee approval prior to, and make sure everything's okay with Rick on that, this side of things before I go ahead and start telling these interested people, yes, you can make these improvements or no, you can't. And then obviously I'd work with Rick to come up with some sort of an agreement to um, yeah, probably on an individual basis, but at the same time, do we really want to do an individual, you know, agreement for each person? I guess we could state the, you know, the we, parameters on each one. We did kind but of reach some kind of an agreement with a person, correct? That like is a correct. A couple months ago, was a that a few our months meeting? ago? The, the difference there is that those were there was already infrastructure put on the county okay, property okay. without the county being aware of it right right and so it's more or less just using utilizing that and potentially moving it maybe I mean I think one tree was gonna get cut down right okay but this is actually you know this party is interested in planting trees on there they're interested in putting in this driveway and I just don't know if, where we should go with that I just didn't want to tell them something that I shouldn't have so I just waited for this committee so meeting here do we need the lawyers <laughs> opinion on this well, that's why I had Rick here and how you interpret what FEMA meant by nothing you know no improve no improvements that would seem like not right didn't they use the word permanent in their description in FEMA's description I don't know specifically I have to go back and look um, to see what it is a um, couple of things um, we have previously worked on an agreement to we have a draft agreement for people who want to rent these spaces for a period of time um, they go from year to year I know one individual asked to do it for a long term um, it would be my suggestion that we just continue to do it year to year like we're planning on doing with everybody um, and then they have the option to renew there's a deadline within the, the agreement for them to ask to renew it for the following year um, at a set price whatever that price is um, I don't know that there was a specific price given or uh, agreed to, if I remember correctly. We had a, you know, we had a specific price on the agreement, but it does say negotiable. Okay, gotcha. Um, so in regards to any improvements, yeah, I, I think we need to be very careful in regards, and I can clarify what language. I don't remember offhand what language. Um, uh, I know you can't build on them, and we know we can't sell them. Um, what it means by improvements, I guess I'd have to double check on that. I know there was talk about a driveway. That particular one, the person who wants to put the driveway in, um, has property immediately adjacent to that particular lot. Um, so that's why they want to do it. They want to do it for a long term. And, you know, these are all, I don't want to single out this one, but this is a, just an example, um, which in and of itself isn't necessarily a problem. Problem is that someday if they don't want to use it any longer, then you have this kind of weird driveway going from the neighbors into this particular lot. And, you know, what do you do with it at that point in time type of a thing. Um, I think they mentioned, some had mentioned maybe planting some trees or something along those lines Correct. again too. Um, Again, you know, planting stuff, 
maybe might be good for the person who's renting it now, but the next person may want it more clear. So it, it's really kind of a tough call to, to say. So, you know, I'd like to say you have a blanket, you know, you can't do anything to it. But on the other hand, too, you know, these people are looking for it for camping primarily, I think, Correct. is what the primary issue mm -hmm. or, or um, use is. Um, so I guess my thoughts are, recommendation were, is try to have some established guidelines. And I use that term in quotes only because I think some just general ideas as to what we'd like to have people do or not do. And then, you know, if there is, you know, if someone wants to put in a little flower garden, that's one thing. If you want to plant five trees, that might be something different because obviously that's something much more long-term and permanent. You know, if they want to put in a driveway, you know, that might be good for now, but if next year they decide they don't want it, then you have a driveway and, and you know, can it be utilized in the same fashion. So <clears throat> I'm being a little wishy-washy because I don't want to say that you should or shouldn't do exactly this, but I think some general parameters would be good, um, but then leaving enough room for, like I said, someone wants to put in some perennials that they're going to you know, potentially use next year, that's not as big of a deal if you start planting bushes and trees because those are a little more permanent. So, um, so those are some initial thoughts, and I'm sure that raises some questions because I didn't answer the question specifically. But <laughs> <laughs> well, um, and, and my knee-jerk reaction to um, request for reimbursement is mm. no. Mm -hmm. uh, I would agree. That would open some doors that we probably don't want open. Mm -hmm. In the agreement, the way it's drafted at the moment does indicate that there would be no reimbursement. It would become property of the county, any improvements. Mm -hmm. Hey, Jean, I hear you have a question or need to say something. Yeah, Go right ahead. Um, of the, um, down there, and I do realize that the county owns that, that falls still under rules and regulations for the Mount Tremplo Corporation. And right now they are going through um, a situation of having to get new grinders um, that need to be uh, are in for the um, system for waste, but they're having to get um, new ones, which will end up going on the tax roll, and that's still kind of up in the air. So my concerns are how does that, the Mount Trumple Corporation rules that they've been following through the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources fall into place with the things of adding or possibly adding um, things. I think we need to look in into that um, prior to making any other decisions. Um, I, I, but I do agree with Dan. I don't think we should do anything um, for the reimbursement. And I am quite concerned about the um, planting of things in regards to like the grinder situation. And Roxroy uh, Bennett could help more with that. He's um, the gentleman in charge of planning for the village of Trumplow. But I think you all need to be aware of that and the rules that they have to follow under the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources. I am not aware of any of those rules. So Me if, either. If they're applicable, and I don't know if they are or aren't, but I mean, if they're applicable, certainly we would need to take a look at those as well. That's for sure. Depending on what each, you know, proposed project would be. I know that is a floodplain down there, and I know there, there would definitely be some permitting process if you're going to be putting in any type of grass, I'm assuming it's going to be quite a lengthy process to do that. Mm -hmm. I don't know yep. for certain, but there, there definitely would probably be some permits involved in that with through DNR. Because they, there's a 50% rule, um, and I can't remember if it went through or not, that uh, people that own things down there already um, have to go through um, procedures through the DNR and the village to get approved. But um, Rick, if you could just check into that to make sure because I don't want to misquote, but I've sat in on those meetings or virtual meetings. Um, so I think that's important that the county um, pays attention to that as well. Um, just a couple of questions. What was the name of the, you said Mount something? Mount Tremplo Corporation. And did you say that they are in the process of revising rules? Um, they are working on uh, with the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources grinders for the sewage and things like that um, that get taken out when it floods because they have to come out. And, and they are in need of new ones. So the Mount Trumpel Corporation is working with the village, which is working with the attorney, which is working with the uh, Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources on things like that. But Roxroy Bennett, um, the planner, I believe, is his title for the village um, could help you more, Rick. 
Perfect. I was just going to ask who the contact person was, and I'll reach out yep. to reach out to that person. Yeah. And Jean, this this is Rob. Um, yeah. I, I'm sorry, I mean, I'm probably talking out of my depth here. Are are we for sure talking about the the same chunk of land? And, and no offense there. I, I maybe I'm just confused because I boy I never remember us hearing about that Mount Trempolo Corp. And I'm not I'm not saying it's not there, but the, I, I guess I'm a touch surprised with that because I've I've never. I mean, Kevin never brought it up. No one has ever brought it up before, so that's really interesting to me. I, have, I don't deal with these lots, per se, but we're for sure talking right. about the same chunk of land that, that you're talking about. That, that whole area down there, um, and some of the, if, for those of you who have been down there, when you come around the corner past Hungry Point on the left-hand side, some of those um, prior to the, uh, the, in part of the FEMA situation, people put closed bids on those, and then they, um, whoever had the highest bid when the bid was open, um, own those. Now, those people might not, um, and it's, it's a join thing, and Mount Trumple has been around for, God, I don't know, 30, 40 years. My father used to be uh, one of the board members, um, and they cannot go in and do anything permanent. Um, and I realized that the county owns that area down on the far end, but it's still part of that whole area um, in regards to the grinders and, and things like that. For clarification, though, I just want to make sure that Rick contacts them. But they are in the process of doing things, having to get permission um, with the DNR. No. Great. Oh, thanks, Jean. Yeah. Nope, I'll definitely reach out to them. Thank you. Appreciate that. I think you that's <clears throat> I think that's a really good idea. In fact, it might even be a good idea to have some people from the Mount Trempolo that group come to our meeting, so that we can all talk together and even know these people um, and explain sort of what's happening with that chunk of land. I'll, um, I'll make the contact with the planner and then get some inf information and then I'll touch base with, who, who's the chair of the committee? Beth. Chair, Beth is I'm the vice chair. Beth, she's on the road coming okay. home. Um, I'll just, I'll contact someone to see about getting it on the agenda and having them come here after Great. I have a conversation with that them. That would be really good. So I don't think we're in a position today to make any decision about. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sounds good. Do you have, is there anything more you want to talk about that? There is actually. Go ahead. Well, one, <laughs> one question I have though is it's become, I mean. <laughs> Does stuff even, I mean, what would you plant there? Tamarack trees? I mean, it's so prone to wetness. Yeah, you know. There's a lot of river birch down there. There's, yeah. there's stuff that'll grow. Mm -hmm. I mean, there is, and there are probably locations that would be just fine to, right. you know, put the trees and shrubbery in. It's Part of me thinks that's not a bad idea, you know, to enhance that area with. Right. But it would be good to know if we can even do that. <clears throat> right, okay. okay. All right, sorry. Oh, no problem. And then on the same topic, um, <laughs> it's funny now, I was going to ask the committee permission to install electric in these sites. <laughs> so I don't know if that's something we should get cleared first, but I have been in touch with the village of Trempolo, and they can do it. And um, I just think it would be, make these lots a lot more attractive to, because okay. that's what everybody's calling me about, and okay. they're saying, well, we're interested in staying in these lots, but there's no electricity or water. I'm not... At this point, I'm not going to do anything with the water, but if the electricity okay. thing, if I could look into that more. Um, Isn't there an old pad by the swamp bar? There is. Yep, there is. And actually, a private party put in a couple of electric pedestals on the county property, knowing or not knowing. And um, that's another situation I'm working on right now as well, to make sure all that's straightened out. That would um, be a good question for you, Rick, when you talk to... Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, <clears throat> but it's my understanding that some of the lots that were sold um, by sealed bid, um, subsequently, the new owners were allowed to install electricity. Okay. Now, I, I'd have to, uh, well, I'm learning not to depend as much on my memory as I used to, mm. <laughs> but um, I think, um, having been down there and seen some of these lots that some of them do have electricity now, um, and I think um, that would indicate an, accept an acceptance from FEMA as uh, mm -hmm. something you, you can legally do. Okay. But easy enough to check on that. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So this is like, we now own the land, but FEMA has oversight. I, I think there were strings attached to the owner, okay. the transfer of the ownership. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So does FEMA like do spot checks to make sure? The, 
property police. Yes, they do. Do they? Enough. Okay, I wasn't sure if they did or not. So, um, in fact, uh, the the Swamp Bar location, um, when I was the emergency management director, was down there with some FEMA reps because there was a requirement on uh, wellhead that had to be um, constructed and, and raised so that uh, flood didn't negatively impact mm -hmm. that well. Sure. Mm -hmm. I see birds and vegetables. Yeah. Les, did you have a question? You're on mute if you do. <laughs> I wonder if he's talking to somebody else. <laughs> Buzz, do you have a question? No, I was actually on a phone call. I apologize, <laughs> okay. but I was on mute. <laughs> Your lips were moving, but we couldn't hear you. Okay, thanks. Uh, so we can have this on the, well, whatever Rick finds out, he'll be in touch with, you'll be in touch with Reed and Rob, and yep. mm -hmm. we'll see where to go from there. Okay, thanks. Yeah, well, Sounds I'm great. Sure, I'm sure it'll be back on the agenda again, too. Absolutely. Okay. Especially, yeah, it's, especially it's with the spring coming up here, hopefully quickly. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, 40s for the next two weeks and a lot of sunshine. Exactly. <clears throat> Thank but you. March Rick. can be evil, mm -hmm. you know. You bet. Basketball yeah, championship true. week. But it was early this year, so that means we'll skip the snowstorm we normally yes. have during basketball. <laughs> yeah, I'm hoping. Okay, anything else, Rob? On or, or Rob Rich <laughs> Reed? No, I think that covers the everything regarding okay. the trample lots there. So. All right. Well, you're on the agenda for next. The next. Uh, you're up for eleven. Petrick Park 50th anniversary <coughs> event discussion. Well, actually, that's something Reed and I are both going to be working on together. I mean, obviously, Reed's the park manager, but I think we, you know, because it could really be a, a cool uh, tourist um, event, too. You know, these are kind of our initial plans that, that Reed and I were talking about, and we love feedback from the committee. And just to remind folks, thanks, Rick, um, you know, next year does mark the 50th anniversary that the county has had Petrick Park. And, you know, it's pretty amazing, of course, what, how um, the, the county partnered with with the Petrick family and with um, you know civic organizations, I mean, what a what a jewel that's become. So we really feel like we should celebrate it. You know, I know Reed. Um, an aspect that you're going to be working on, especially, is the um, the the new logo. Um, Correct. And I think last meeting we decided that would be a more of a 20, um, maybe late 2021 project rather than earlier to kind of coincide more with you know it being launched in 2022 or maybe early 2022 you're we going to be doing that that's right we were going to have students around the county do the the logo contest and there was this year there was six schools that were interested so i told them that we're going to actually postpone it a year and um we'll be doing that for next next season for sure so and then what we were thinking is we really want it to be trump county centric you know um because it ought to be it's a trump county jewel right so our idea was maybe bringing in for food, bringing in some food trucks that are based here in Trempolo County, you know, owned by hopefully Trempolo County um, residents, um, and give people some really interesting uh, food options out there. We'd like to maybe start the day um, with sort of a, a, a ceremony or a presentation, if you will, where we talk a little bit about the park. Um, you know, I, we were thinking that the, uh, the Petrick family was willing, they could talk a little bit about the, the history um, of the park and and then you know maybe Reed or represent from the county could as well um, maybe we could get some of our both local and uh, more regional civic leaders to hopefully attend as well um, and then you know maybe have uh, some live music as well I know there's a lot of um, uh, music options here within Trumpelo County of people that that have bands and that you know in my in my other work that's one thing I do is I book a lot of music and I know we've got a lot of really um, great Trempolo County based musicians um, so we could we could bring that there one piece we've talked about as well and I'd, I'd like to get the, the uh, I think we'd like to get the committee's input is we would you know we would like the option to possibly apply for a one day um, you know beer license and then maybe we could work with the um, um, the uh, Whitehall or the the pigeon elk rotten. excuse me elk elk rotten, yeah, gun excuse me, elk rotten gun club maybe they could we could partner with them to, to maybe serve some drinks and that sort of thing um, because you know it just as we know a lot of celebrations around here we uh, uh, we also could try to focus on beer and wine that comes from the county as well we'd have to figure out all the details of that but I, I think um, um, you know partnering with the Elk Rod and Gun Club would would be really cool because they've done a lot of work around that area too so 
that that is sort of what we've we've come up with um, you know at this point uh, our thoughts are maybe something in September um, September tends to still have some really nice weather we've gotten past most of the big festivals so we won't be stepping on the toes probably you know I know Blair Cheese Fest is in September so we'd try to avoid that weekend but um, yeah, and just kind of make it a really great celebration where, where we will celebrate the park and we make it where maybe an event that something we haven't done before, frankly, that might bring some new people in to enjoy it and just really kick off the next 50 years of the park. So this um, would be September 2022? September 2022, yes. Do you remember the month? Do you remember when it was dated? I'm thinking July, August. Yeah, because I've when. seen the deed, but I can't. Yeah. But we, we really are open to ideas and suggestions. You know, again, the, the biggest theme we want to just push is it's Trumplow County centric, that we're not bringing in, you know, the, the, the food would, you know, would go, would be people from Trumplow County. Music would be pe people from Trumplow County. If we can have beer and wine, you know, now that we've got some breweries and wineries, we could focus on that, you know, um, and just celebrate the, the donation and, and the park, so. We're, but we're really open to ideas. I think it's a great idea, um, Jeannie, or Yes, Chairman. Michelle. Um, <clears throat> I imagine you're going to advertise no carry-ins or, car or it, not. It if, if we go that route, yeah, I mean, we would, we would probably, you know, um, I think we'd have to figure out, hopefully we'd, we don't want to spend a ton, I guess the money side of it is what we have to talk about too. We don't want to right. spend, you know, we can spend some money on the fact that it is a promotional event, right? And we do put money towards promotion. Um, we also want to try to maybe make some money back, and we'd have to work with Becky on that, on the logistics of doing that right, um, and, you know, above board and all that. So, yes, if we, if yeah. we did do that, but I suppose, you know, maybe we'd look. We just need we'd, to yeah, discuss it that and see the pros and cons. or Because yep. you're going to have campers that maybe don't care about the anniversary, and they're going to want to bring, well, obviously they'll bring their own. You know, so you kind of, that's a discussion we will have probably in the future. Yeah. Yeah, that might, that, actually, that point of there already being campers, that might be a hard thing to, you know, you can't really tell them they can't have their own stuff, I guess, you know, but, yeah. yeah. So Robert, yeah, uh, Reed, have you guys thought about hosting some uh, events with it so you, we do get the draw, so it's just not, so the celebration, you know, is the recognition portion, obviously, but like uh, a bike ride starting and leaving from there or a paddle ending up there or some event that's going to draw uh, additional folks to the celebration of uh, the park. That's a good idea. And I also want to focus on kids because the whole purpose of the park was kid-centered, family-centered. Um, yeah, I, I, you know, I think we did briefly talk about that, but I think that's something we'd, we'd have to explore more. But I, I think, you know, we've got, we've got some great bicycle groups within the county. You know, we, we could definitely partner with some groups that would maybe help um, organize something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, that's a great idea to just bring more people into the actual event. For sure. We've got to tie in the 4-H because that's what that park was intended for. Right. And actually, Ray Shanklin was like the agent in the county when he made that agreement with... Uh, the Petrick family. Yes, so you might um, want to talk to the agent. I forget his name. Um, or it's her now, isn't it? Anyway. The DNR agent? Or no, no, agent? no. The 4-H agent. agent. Okay. And um, yeah. maybe they have some ideas. I know, like, in other Center. organizations that we've done around our town and stuff, that we have, like, those groups get together and... 4-H, the, the, the Miss Royalty Courts or everything, they'll put like games together for kids to do. So like they can just have their little games set up around the area and these kids could do like ring toss and that could also get them involved and that would be put on by the actual 4-H, FFA, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, any type of organization. We could reach out to them for help this time. Yeah. Yeah. Reed, this is Jean. Yes, Jean. Could we do some education as well and maybe the kids, you know, learning of the, the butterflies and the milkweed and uh, maybe even planting some things? I mean, something, you know, simple, but they could participate in that as well. 
You bet we can, and I'm I'm glad that it's it happens to uh, it's next year, not this year, because that prairie right. should be pretty well on its way and pretty well established by that time. So we could definitely do, yeah. you know, some sort of a walk through there and do some explaining on ecology and that side of things. So fabulous. And I'm sure, and I I, um, I forget her name now, but the the lovely lady who helped us. Um, plant that you know she from Trempolo I think she has a nursery of, yeah. of yes. uh, native prairie Joyce is her name Joyce, Joyce. yeah I'm sure she would yes. be delighted to come up and talk about you know both what's planted and identify some things and then Absolutely. maybe even adults too if they're like hey I, I would love to have some native prairie on my little patch of land but I don't even know how to approach it you know she could maybe be, talk to some folks about that too so and we, I just learned yesterday that butterflies love old bananas so you get, you put sticks in your flower garden and put an old banana in the peel on the stick, and butterflies will just flock to it. Huh. So we can have me. kids walk around the prairie and sticks. Perfect. Put <laughs> ban old bananas on the sticks. It would be so fun. There you go. For sure. We'll get a quick trip to donate some bananas. I know. I'm just. I'm hoping I remember that in, in the spring to do that. I think it's really cool, and we should just move forward. We'll, we'll keep this as a rolling agenda item, right. and we'll start putting some actual. I think I, I think choosing a date is probably the biggest thing, you know, yeah. and then moving forward from that, kind of putting it all together. But we've got some time. But at the same time, you know, again, being someone who plans events, boy, time gets away from you quick. So um, we'll be we'll focus on that. So alert your family. Well, actually, there's two families involved because what it was intended for was my uh, aunt's maiden name was Matchy. Oh, yeah. So I got to make some connections here to get that, si that side involved with that too. Cool. Okay, number, are we ready to move on to number 12? Petrick Park update. Yes, I'm just gonna talk a little bit about some of the items we talked about last meeting. Uh, one of them was the trailer. I don't know if you remember. Um, yep. I started actually, I started thinking about the trailer situation more at the park, and that trailer has probably been, it maybe gets used once a year for tree and shrub. So I was thinking of, you know, we, we kind of the idea behind purchasing it was to be able to move some of the park equipment to other county properties should we, you know, have another park at some point or maybe start managing um, one of the county, you know, the county land over by Blair, by Whitehall here, if there's anything that potentially could happen with that in the future. But I'm thinking if, until that happens, uh, do we really need a trailer at this time? Um, there again, it gets used one day a year. Is it worth spending, you know, five to $10,000 on a nice aluminum trailer for something that's used once a year? I just, I just kind of re, I reconsidered it. I, I, you know, it takes up a lot of space in there, and I'd hate to just have it wither away, you know, outside and, you know, or inside there, for example. Then we don't, other things are parked outside, and it just doesn't get used that often, unless that's, this is something that the committee wants me to move forward with and consider buying it. But I, I looked at it as more of a, I don't want to say waste of money, but we could allocate the funds to something a little bit better, like maybe the, you know, the lower shelter improvement, that kind of thing. I think that's probably a good idea. If you need to use a trailer for a day, you can borrow ours. Oh, and, and, and see, that's the thing. I've had so many people say, so just use my trailer. Well, right. Okay. Well, that's the really only issue is liability situation. No, DLM or? gave you permission to sell the other trailer that was owned by DLM. Okay. And, and with the, re the understanding that you're going to get another trailer that we can use for Trey and Shrub. So can now we... it would be leaving without any trailer whatsoever for the entire department. That's the only issue. But I have, I have discussed this with uh, the county conservationist, and apparently in the past, um, there's been they've used like rented a, a trailer or U-Haul vans that kind of thing for tree and shrub, which apparently is not that much per day to use. So that's at least that's a conversation I've had with other people around the office and whatnot. So, but if it is something that though it is in writing an agreement or something, I maybe mean, we have to look into. Yeah, you can check that out. How but to? I tend to yeah. agree with you. That five thousand dollars for something that's used once a year. <coughs> I mean, certainly if, if, the, if something comes up where, okay, we are going to be moving this equipment around and, yeah, we, you, know, you know, should the parks, you know, expand or other places, I'm, something we can bring up and consider at that time. Okay. But I'll look into that 
what we did with DLM there and um, make sure we're not do, we're not doing anything that we or make sure we follow through on what we said we were going to do. So okay. we'll look at that. Otherwise, the park. You know, we're, with the weather we're having, thinking of maybe opening up the gates at some point. You know, in the near future, there's still a fair amount of snow in there and everything. And uh, obviously, we don't want to open up the bathrooms and everything too soon. But you know, it's, we're getting close here. Um, we still have people calling all the time for Ashley for the Arts. Um, we're going to continue working on the lower shelter this season. We had the new cement put in last year. Um, other than that, we're just kind of waiting for it to get warm and get started again. We we do have a couple of uh, the seasonal positions are going to be advertised very soon. I'll get in touch with HR on that. Um, we'll be conducting interviews there over in March, and then uh, we'll start working come April. Okay. Reed, this is Jean. Yes. Has Ashley for the Arts, um, the people in charge of that, have they reached out to you in regards to um, things like they always have in the past? They have not yet. They typically, okay. they typically do around this time of year in spring with the agreement that um, they can access the, the parking area, the neighbor's property there through the park and that they can allow the uh, school buses to come through. Um, but they, haven't, they have not reached out yet at this year, but I'm assuming that'll be happening shortly because it appears the festival is going to be on. So, Yeah. I just I want, just want to make sure that we're not at the 9 o'clock minute like we've been in the past when they've sent stuff to us and we've had to make an immediate decision. Um, so if their people could be proactive, that would, I think, behoove um, all, everybody. So. Sure, and I, if you'd like... Gene, I can certainly reach out and, you know, I can take, you know, take the lead on it if you'd like. Reach out to them, see um, what they're thinking or whatnot, just to get it moving. Maybe just an email to them, like, hey, I'm thinking about this and whatever, and at least you made the effort to, sure. to do so. And, um, you know, because obviously things are different this year with COVID, so. For sure. You bet. I can do that. But it is their responsibility at the end of the day. It is August, right? The like the second week in August. August twelfth, thirteenth, and fourteenth. Okay. Correct. Okay. Yes, Bob has a question. I know. Last fall, you know, toward the end of the season, we talked about uh, that rain garden down there. Mm -hmm. About maybe having some outside help come in and uh, look it over. What do we have to do? Maybe that's something we need to, you know, address at our next meeting. You know, if we have it, you know, one of these people that have a business like that, so it's, the upkeep is there. Right, exactly. And if we need to replant something or whatever, I'm sure that's what the olson Maliszewski family would like, is, you know, so it don't get neglected if, you know, and uh, it's checked once in a while. Right, okay. And then the other thing, did you uh, order some trees and shrubs? I did. For the program? I did, yes. And that's going to be seated in like where the outside privies were? That's correct, yep. Yep, I talked. I spoke with uh, Ben and um, we've got, once the trees and shrubs show up, we'll put them in in the springtime there. Late April, early May. Mm -hmm. I had a question on Anything else on the park? I think that should cover it unless anybody else has any questions or comments. We got one other thing. Uh, sure. Since we're getting into the tourism season, you want to kind of give us an update what your your intentions are, you know, and different things like that. Yeah, you bet. So, put the. So, um, you know, we we really have now, I think, gotten a lot of, um, it, with the grant that we had over the winter, we've really built up kind of our, our social media presence um, with, um, you know, our, our tourism page. Um, and we do now have the ability, we've, we've collected a lot of, um, of, of uh, emails and that sort of thing through our, um, our contest that we did. Um, and I think what we just really want to do is push outdoor recreation here in 2021, you know, and what that'll probably be through utilizing our social media, um, partnering with the different organizations that are, that are planning events, um, and, and just getting the word out about the outdoor rec opportunities that we have, whether it be, you know, biking or hiking or, or whatever it may be. So, um, you know, my, my budget is relatively limited 
limited to to you know what I what I have for advertisement, but I think we can do a lot still through um, social media, partnering again with with the organizations that that are having events. You know, some of those are still up in the air, but as was talked about with Ashley for the Arts, um, you know, it sounds like a lot of uh, organizations are, are going full bore. So um, I, I think just doing our piece, you know, part, partnering with our different organizations to, to help get the word out about, again, both events, but even more so, I think, Outdoor Rec, because I think that's what people are really going to be looking for here uh, in 2021 still with, with COVID. Um, you know, we, we saw... Um, working with and talking with a lot of, of businesses that had the ability to have outdoor seating and that sort of thing um, in 2020, they still had really great seasons. Um, and, you know, I, that's, that bled over and I think helped even businesses that didn't have the ability to, to have outdoor um, space. Um, it still helped them as well because the more people you have coming into the county, that just bleeds over. So for me, it's all about pushing outdoor recreation. I mean, not all, but a lot of it's about pushing outdoor recreation because that for us is going to bleed over and, and help other businesses. So obviously, you know, I wish I wish I had a thirty thousand dollar budget to do that, but but I don't. I do have money with promotion. Petrick Park does as well. So um, you know, I, I'm also open to suggestions and ideas on on what folks think we can do to help. Uh, promote even more but you know working with um, um, Gene and the Great River Road organization working with some of these bigger organizations to make sure too that Trumplo County is part of the conversation and it is you know we've the work of this committee um, I think has it made sure that people know that, that we have a real interest of being part of the conversation as well so um, I guess that's that's kind of my, my general thoughts which and I, I just read a big article about <clears throat> what people are looking for this spring is outdoor stuff and yeah. if last saturday was any indication i was in eau claire over on prairie river that little outdoor area um off the highway it was jammed with people walking the path there walking their dogs they gotten coffee at the coffee cabin i mean i could not believe the number of people that were outside yeah. so people are like tired of being cooped up um, and outdoor outdoor activities is where it's going to be at this summer. Yeah, no doubt. Bobby, you had your hand. I know we had talked earlier in regards to, I don't know how many of those county maps and brochures we've got left about putting them out at um, entry of origin into the state, you know, like Dresbeck, uh, Menominee, Hudson, you know, yep. stuff like that, local areas like in uh, where there's a truck stop and stuff like that i mean sure you've got people are addicted to their cell phones but people still like to have a piece of paper in front of them when they're having coffee in the morning and actually look at something you know maybe you know in your adventures to, to get these publications out they're no good in a box in a closet someplace yeah. I, I agree. So we, one thing we do get actually uh, quite often, we get requests from other parts of the state that we do have our, our, um, our maps at. And actually that, that is something that I think we need to look into as well is just doing an update of that. It's been a few years since we've updated it, but um, our, our paper maps. So we do actually send a lot of those. A group will ask, hey, we need another 50. So we'll send bundles. And we have a ton of them, you're right, in storage. I think I, think I do need to get more out at a few certain places in the county. I, I do try to drop some off in different spots, but I think maybe having a more strategic um, you know, placement of some of them at maybe, yeah, some of the businesses, some of the gas stations as you're coming into the county, that sort of thing. So I can definitely make that a priority to try to empty out those boxes even more and get more out. I agree. Because you're right, not, I, I'm even the same way. I, of course, I look a lot on my phone, but I, I like having something paper quite often too. You carry it with you as you drive around. So I agree with you, Bob. I, I, I'll, I'll try to make a priority of getting more of those maps and, and just, you know, places around the county. We're, we used to make t-shirts out of out of the Trumplow County map that was drawn? We we were, uh, we didn't go ahead with, COVID kind of sidelined that a okay. little bit, it, it, um, but we do have that cool map. You know, it all came down to just making the financial side of that work, and um, but that still is an option that we've got. Because I think, and it's a actually, cool image. I would want one of those maps if they were available. I mean, those are so, it's so cool. Yeah, yeah, it's a local artist just did that for us because she wasn't working at the time and she wanted to do it and it's really, really cool. Um, and I, my, my hope is to utilize that more. I think that was sort of a, not that it wasn't an important project, but it was kind of a side project. And then 
when COVID hit, a lot of the grant work was what I was focusing on. We didn't really pursue that, but yeah, I think it's still something really cool we could use and should, so. Then I guess the other thing is uh, WHDL was over the other day and that radio show they're gonna have about outdoors is a go, and yep. I guess you're gonna be the first speaker. I am, I will be there Thursday, yep, at uh, 8.15. So, yep, I will be on that. Then the way it sounds, if it goes good enough, it's gonna be on twice a week. Yep. Yeah, I'm really excited about that because as, as I mentioned, or we talked about before, it's going to be, um, not only will it be on the radio, then we can share it via our social media as well because they record everything and it becomes a video. So um, yeah, I'm, I'll be there Wednesday. We'll be talking about all sorts, or excuse me, Thursday. Um, so I'll share that with on our Facebook page and I'll let you know how that goes too. But I, know, I think- When I was talking to Mike, I says maybe it might be something that, you know, both on the county and the radio to have a link to it so they can hear you know, a past recording, because I know just by listening to, like the snowmobile report, guys will, they literally lock it in their mind, say it's going to be on every day at 10 o'clock in the morning. Well, I got to make sure I'm near a radio at 10 o'clock yep. in the morning, you know, to listen, listen to this report. So maybe, you know, if we put that on the web page for the county that, okay, be sure to listen to the outdoor report or whatever. Yeah, my hope it. Oh, sorry. Yeah, my hope it builds up, kind of like you said, like the snowmobile one has. And it's not. Again, it's not just going to be me. It's going to be from a, diff a few different counties. So it'll be nice because of the regional appeal. You know? Maybe you and Reed could think about doing a monthly podcast about what's going on in Trempolo County. That's Any, an option too. Anybody we, can do a podcast, and it's so simple. Well, especially with the technology we hear here have yeah, here in Trempolo County. You can do it County. right here. Yeah. Also, oh, um, when you're on Thursday, make sure you push our 5K trail and strum. Boy, isn't that beautiful. I didn't get a chance to get to that event, but you know, I, just a reminder, um, you know, there's about 100 acres that the city of Strum owns that um, used to be where the ski jump was right. years ago, and now they're developing it into walking and hiking and snow or snowshoeing trails, and it's a gorgeous piece of property yeah, and some really motivated, day. yeah. And they've got some, um, I think they just had a big event the other day, mm -hmm. um, and I believe they had really good turnout. Were you yeah. at it? No, no, I wasn't but yeah, even, so. Um, yeah. So. But no, I, I appreciate that. And I, just, just a reminder, I know you all do this, but I, um, I'm very open to suggestions and ideas. If you, if you think there's something we ought to be doing, like, hey, here's an idea for promoting something, or here's an idea like to try it out, get, call me or, or shoot me an email. I'm, I'm very open and um, you know, I, I, yeah, happy to take direction from the committee on that as well. So I go with my gut quite a bit or talking with different groups, but um, you'll never offend me if you say, hey, Rob, actually I think you should be focusing on this more to help promote something or, or, or a strategy that you might have. So okay. um, never hesitate to reach out. But. Good job, you guys. I have a question. Okay. Just to announce, what is the, what is the, um, I gotta look what it is. Anticipated date of the opening of the gate at the park. Weather, weather permitting. Pretty much yeah, it I know that. depends on the weather, but the sign does say April 15th. That's when we okay. officially open. Um, but, you know, weather like we're going to have, I guess we could certainly have people in there, you know, that want to walk the trails and whatnot, even though it'll probably be wet down there. Um, okay. But it'll be weather dependent. We're a foot short of snow. Yeah, it's been a drought year. That's yeah, for sure. It was dry last summer too. A drought summer, which was the <clears throat> biggest problem for the rain garden. You know, we just right. didn't have enough water. Let's not jinx it. No, I don't. You know, I'm fine. I have a wetlands growing in my front yard, so drought's fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thanks, you guys. Our next meeting will be April sixth, twenty twenty one. Eight thirty or nine. Do you want to stick to eight thirty or move to nine or? Eight thirty. Eight is yep. good for me. It gets me going. Same here. Yep. I think we're good with whatever you guys want. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you all. I will adjourn the meeting at oh nine thirty one. You're on your way, Gene. Great. Thanks, everybody. Take care. Bye. Bye. Gene. See you tomorrow, Thanks, Gene. You guys. Yep. The whole Dane committee was here today. Yeah, it was my save for best. Yeah. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. She's leaving sunny Arizona to come to sunny Wisconsin. Yeah, I believe that's what my calendar says. Yep. yep. I'll be almost done with teaching. Oh, when's the semester? Teaching regular semester. What yeah. Do you, what do you teach? Social work field unit. All my students are in their field placement. At the Eau Claire, right? Mm-hmm. UW Eau Claire, and it's virtual. Ugh.
What do you know, Joseph? It's hard for students. I can, if I was a grade school kid and needed to be in virtual class, I'd be kicked out. <laughs> That's a good excuse to have him jam. I couldn't do that. Um, I have to have the I know, and I person to person like contact. Using my hands and walking around <clears throat> the classroom. And yeah. 